is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial I'm just going to explain about what Java is and how it works for those who haven't encountered Java a whole lot before. Java is um, it's, it's probably the biggest most used programming language today and it's uh, there, there are only like maybe a small handful of really serious heavyweight programming languages, kind of multi-purpose languages that you can use for anything. And uh, one of them is C++ and the other really is Java. And I'm not sure that there are any other really serious contenders for completely multi-purpose modern programming languages, although people will certainly argue about that. And the way Java works is, and I'm going to draw some diagrams now. By the way, this is the Eclipse IDE that we installed in the last tutorial. And I'm not going to use this in this tutorial, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some diagrams. And I'm, I'm very bad at drawing stuff, which I apologize for, but I'm going to do my best here with the aid of a bit of um, drawing to explain how Java actually works. So the idea is that you start by creating text files. So you create some text files and you use a specialized editor usually to create these text files. Although you could use any kind of editor. You could create these text files in Notepad if you wanted to because they're literally text files. So they're text files which you write not in a normal kind of human language but in the Java programming language. So a programming language really is just, it's just like a human language, except it's written obviously with different syntax and different words. So, but there's nothing special about these text files. You just, you, the programming language is just an idea. That's all it is really. And you write text in that language. Now when you create your text files, you give them the extension um, .java. So like normally when you create a text file, you call it um, something or other .txt, txt in Windows. But with Java, if it's a Java file by convention, and it is just a convention in a way, you call it .java. So let's try to draw some sort of box around that. There we go. Now once you've got your text files, they kind of express the idea of what you want to do. They, they contain the idea of your computer program but your computer program can't read them directly because the um, the .java files they're kind of like they're kind of like a human way of expressing what a computer should do even though they look cryptic at first java is designed ultimately to be readable by hum readable and writable by human beings not by computers even though it looks pretty complex when you first see it so the next step is to turn your Java files and typically a computer program will have lots of Java files in it, although it might only have one. But you need to turn them into binary files that the computer can then read. And to do that, you use something called Javac, which is a, which is a computer program that is part of the JDK, the Java development kit, uh, usually standard edition, SE is the one you'll be using. Now you don't usually have to worry about using Java directly and I, 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 I haven't, I think at the moment I haven't covered it in the course and if you want to know about using Java directly um, I could maybe make some videos on that, let me know. But usually what you do is you write your Java program in Eclipse, let's just go to Eclipse quickly. Uh, which is this, or you write it in another specialized editor. And I'm not actually sure how to go to the workbench here. Oh, here we go. So this is what Eclipse looks like typically when you're using it. And this here, I've got here, if, if I can open it, this is a Java language file. And um, what was the saying? Oh yeah, usually you don't have to use Java directly. You write your Java files in Eclipse and then you just press a button which is this green run button and that creates your binary files by using the Java program behind the scenes 
to turn your text files into binary files, which Eclipse will then run. So normally you don't have to know about Javac, you just have to know about this green button up here. Let's go back to the diagram now. So although the program that turns these text files into binary files is called Javac, you don't normally use it. Now what you get then is, let's write this down, you get, a bin you get binary files you get one binary file at least for every .java file that you create. In fact, there's one binary file for every class that you create, and a class is kind of like an idea that you express in a Java programming language. And you can have more than one class in a Java file. And for every class, you'll get one binary file. And the binary files that are created have the extension .class class and in fact these are still not understandable by your computer directly. Now the reason for that is Java uses the idea of what we call a virtual machine. There's this thing called the Java virtual machine or JVM and what it is is a complete simulation basically of a computer so it's a simulation at least of the kind of central processing unit and the memory that any computer has. And you might think, well, why do I want to simulate a different computer on my existing computer? Which is a perfectly good question. And the reason is that you can provide um, a JVM for different platforms, different kinds of computers, different machine architectures. But that JVM can then run any class file without change. So if you take C++, for example, which is another heavyweight programming language like Java, C++ files usually, or at least historically, or maybe it's changing, but usually they run directly on your computer. But then you have to recompile. You have to create a new binary file for every different kind of machine that you would then want to run that binary file on. This program does, this problem doesn't exist with Java because in Java you create these binary files that are then run on the Java virtual machine. So the binary file thinks it's running on the same computer regardless of what computer it's really running on. So the JVM is kind of like an extra layer over your existing computer that provides the kind of computing services for your Java programs to run. So once you've got your class files, basically, you then run them. You, you run your computer program like this. Let's write computer program, program. My handwriting isn't quite this bad in real life, but it's almost as bad, to be honest with you. But don't worry, most of the course I'll be typing, not writing or drawing. So your binary dot class files can run as a computer program with the aid of a kind of simulated computer called the JVM, which stands for Java Virtual Machine. And when you install the JRE, whoops, gosh, this is terrible, JRE, the JRE program that you installed in the last tutorial is, that stands for Java Runtime Environment, environment and it's the JRE that sets up and creates and runs the Java virtual machine. And it's the Java virtual machine that runs your binary class files as a computer program. So that's, that's the basics of um, what Java is and how it works. And Java, it's, um, there are a few different editions of Java. They're all closely related. But, um, and basically using the Java standard edition, which we'll be using in this tutorial series, SE, you can, um, you can create programs that you can then run on, um, on, well, actually I shouldn't, I shouldn't really say this because, um, if, if you want to create a program for a mobile phone, for example, you would use a specialized kind of JDK. You would use, let's say, the Android uh, SDK to compile it, but the but the core language will be the same. So the kind of language of Java 
is the same whether you're creating programs for mobile phones, for desktop computers, or whether you're creating console mode, mode programs, which is what we'll stick to by and large, I think, in this series of tutorials, because in, in this series, we're just gonna look at the basics of the actual language. And it's the same um, even for creating programs for washing machines. So the Java language is the same, no matter what you wanna do, but then you, you'll have to do kind of different, express different ideas in that language depending and possibly even use a different kind of um, JDK and possibly a different JD, JRE depending on what target kind of device you then want to run your Java program on. But this, this program concentrates on the absolute basics of Java, it concentrates on the actual language itself. So we won't be developing mo fancy mobile phone applications or internet applications or um, or kind of desktop applications. We'll just be creating programs that produce text output and we'll be running them in Eclipse. And if you want to create some kind of particular Java program, then uh, you can find courses from me on Android, on um, desktop programming, and um, I think that's it for the moment. But and the first parts of those tutorials are free, so you can get started um, with those just by like subscribing to my free tutorials and looking at the free videos at the start of each one. Okay, so I think that's enough enough for this um, for this second kind of introductory tutorial. And um, as I say, you might want to go now to the kind of main part of the tutorial series and start trying to create a program. And when you do that, it will seem bewildering to start with, but hang in there because it does get better. And just typing stuff out and having a go and seeing it run gives you a lot of confidence. And if you just kind of stick at it, eventually you will get the hang of it because that's what I did. I don't have a degree in Java or anything like that. I didn't have any kind of training. I just learned this myself the same way you're learning it actually from books. I didn't have the internet back in uh, 96 when I learned Java and I've been working in it very successfully um, ever since. Okay, so that's it for this time. Join me again in the next tutorial and until then, happy coding. Thank you.